So in this video, I'm going to cover the most important aspect for beginners, and that is safety. I know, I know, you just want to surf, but bear with me. This is extremely important because you're not going to be the only person out in the water. So this will not only help keep you safe, but all the people around you as well. Once we get through this, we'll move on to what you came for. <music> Tip number one, when in doubt, don't go out. Now this is something every surfer keeps in mind even as they get to the advanced stage. So what does this mean? If the waves look too big to you, or the ocean doesn't look as inviting as normal, or the beach you showed up at is empty, it's as simple as that. Don't paddle out. It's a fairly simple concept, but hard to practice sometimes, especially as a beginner because sometimes wave size can be deceiving from shore. It's also kind of hard to tell as a beginner what to really look for, but that will come with time. And as you progress, keep this in mind. Don't get too confident with your abilities too soon. The ocean always has a way of making you pay if you're not ready for it. So you should always be thinking, would I be able to swim back in if my leash broke? Are there any beach advisories? If something happens, is there anybody around here to help me? Can I handle myself in this size surf? I can't stress this enough. If you have any doubt in your abilities in the water and how to handle yourself, don't paddle out. And that brings me to tip number two, get a surfing buddy. If you are a beginner, you should definitely not be going out alone, especially to any beaches that are empty or beaches that don't have lifeguards. All it takes is for one weird wave to take your board, smack you in the face, and knock you out cold. You can literally drown in six inches of water. I understand that this can be hard for some people. Not everybody can find somebody who's just starting to surf at the same time as you. Not everybody has the same work schedule as you. But when you are first starting and you're getting those early surf sessions under your belt, please bring somebody with you. Please have a surfing buddy. Use Craigslist, use meetups, find somebody at work, at school, a relative. I consider myself an intermediate surfer and I still don't like to go out by myself. I do it because my schedule doesn't always line up with other people, but I definitely don't like it. Tip number three, observe before paddling out. So you just got down to the beach, you're amped up to get on the water, so you put your suit on, strap on your leash, and bam, you're out surfing the NAR. Wrong. Spend some time observing before you paddle out. Look for rip currents. Do I need to paddle around so I don't get stuck somewhere? Is there a channel I can use somewhere? Ask yourself, where are the peaks? Where are the other surfers? Am I at a crowded beach with families and people standing around in the water where I'm actually going to end up surfing? Is there a certain part of the beach that's blocked off to swimmers only or surfers only? It's good practice to watch the ocean for 5 to 10 minutes before you go in to see what's going on. You might have shown up during a lull in between sets and it may only look like it's 2 to 3 feet but in fact it's 8 feet. You want to make sure there's no rogue sets coming through. You want to make sure you can handle yourself at whatever size it is that day. So give yourself some time observe, see what the waves are doing, and then make a decision if you should go out or not. This will also give you some time to see where the waves are breaking and where you should paddle out and sit. So tip number four, triangulate yourself. So triangulating yourself in the lineup is not only important for safety, but also critical for catching waves. So what do I mean by this? Triangulating is a method of making sure you are in the right spot by using reference points and other features to figure out where you are. The water is always changing. Tides, winds, and currents will have an effect on where you're sitting in the water and where you end up. Without keeping track of where you are in the water, a rip current can take you down the beach without you even noticing, or worse, pull you out to sea. So how do you triangulate yourself? It's fairly simple. Once you're in the water, sitting on your board, look towards the beach. Find a landmark that you can remember. Maybe it's something on the bluff, maybe it's a lifeguard tower, maybe it's a person's beach chair or a beach towel, maybe it's a statue, it doesn't matter. Just something static in front of you. Remember this reference point. This will be useful so you can tell if you're drifting up or down the beach. Second, look to your left and to your right and draw a line straight through you to those two points. Now they could be surfers on either side of you or they could be something down the beach. For example, if the beach curves out, maybe there's something on a jetty. This will help you avoid getting sucked out to sea. The combination of these reference points will allow you to paddle back into the same spot every time after you catch a wave, and it will allow you to feel confident in the water and about where you're sitting. If you pick the wrong spot to surf and you're not catching any waves, no big deal. Find a new spot and retriangulate yourself. It's good practice to keep checking your reference points so you're not drifting up and down the beach and so you don't end up in a bad situation. Tip number five, how to fall in the ocean. Pancake, pancake, pancake. Here's the thing. A lot of times we don't know what's underneath us. If we're lucky, it's just a friendly beach break and it's just a sandbar. 
but it could be shallow reef, it could be some rocks, we don't know. So it's good to just get in the habit of falling flat. Don't dive off your board head first. You don't wanna knock yourself out. Don't jump in feet first. You don't wanna have a rock going through your foot. Just keep falling flat. Now, if and when you do go underwater, because you will go underwater, don't panic. Count one or two Mississippis and then come up slowly. I promise that you can hold your breath for one or two Mississippis. Just relax and enjoy the chaos. When you start to come up, cover your head and face with one arm, slowly surface, and with your other arm, reach out and try to find the board. Make sure it's not coming at you. Make sure you're not gonna get hit with a fin. And sort of related to that, just always be aware of your surroundings, who's surfing around you, and never turn your back on the ocean. Even a small wave can ruin your day. Last but not least, tip number six, let somebody know when you're surfing. I've done this since I started surfing, and I still do it. When I'm about to paddle out, I text my wife and I just let her know where I am. Ideally, the message would include a little more information, maybe where you're at, what you're wearing, whether it's a wetsuit, what color wetsuit, are you wearing board shorts, and maybe what color your board is, so that if worst case scenario, she does have to call the Coast Guard, she has enough information to get a search started. I would encourage all of you to do the same. Find somebody who cares about you and just let them know, hey, you're my emergency contact and I'm going to text you where I surf, when I surf. Hopefully, you'll never need this information, but it never hurts to be prepared. If you guys have any questions or comments, Feel free to leave me a comment below or find my email in my bio. In the next episode, we'll get started on the fun stuff and I will help you pick out a beginner surfboard. Yeah.